Sasha and I are in the woods today and what we're doing, this is going to be part one of a whole series. Uh, this spring we're planning to do more shiitake log inoculation and a lot of you may already be familiar with this. But what we're going to do is document step by step each of the steps we take to harvest the logs that we use to then store them and rest them and then the whole process of inoculating. So we'll make a playlist about this and this will be the first video. I thought I'd just mention today what we're up to, which is uh, in this 24 acres of beautiful woods, it's sugar maple dominant, and the beautiful part about doing shiitake inoculation on sugar maple or red oak or other hardwoods, it's an opportunity to go into an existing woodlot and rather than just taking prime trees, you can uh, mix it with a timber stand improvement. So for example, here we have two sugar maples. This is an absolutely beautiful tree. It can be a mill tree in the future, or ideally, no one ever harvests it. It just gets to be a huge, beautiful tree forever and make tons of babies. It's got great genetics, really beautiful, clean trunk. I'll quit saying beautiful if I can help it. Um, and two feet to the north of it is another sugar maple that with the competition of this overstory maple, it's really not long for this world. So unless we cut this very nice specimen out to release the little one, this one will pass away at some point. So it's a prime opportunity for us to harvest this younger tree, give a little more space for this bigger tree, and turn this into three foot long bolts. We'll probably get eight to 10 amazing logs out of this, which we'll inoculate later. So I'm going through and selectively, lightly thinning some of these crowding maples in these woods. And then Sasha's going through and marking them every three feet. And then I'm processing them with an electric chainsaw. We'll load the truck a few times. And the next phase will be to store these logs for a few weeks to rest. We'll talk about that in greater detail. Uh, so stick with us during this whole process. We'll share how we do shiitake inoculation. We have a stick cut to three foot length, so I'm just using that to measure. And we try to get them nice and uniform. It makes it easier to process and stack later, but it can be off by an inch or two here or there, I would Are hope. Are you saying I'm off? No, no. <laughs> I'm saying I could be off when I go to cut. <laughs> Yours are perfectly 36 inches. <laughs> I don't want that. We've got just about a full truckload and some more logs to go. Sasha's been carrying eight times her body weight, it seems. <laughs> um, I'm stronger than I look. <laughs> you're crazy strong. Um, I wanted to make a note. I didn't mention this earlier on, but if you look at, for example, the log that Sasha's touching right now, just at her right hand, you'll see it's darker there. There's a little bit of sap coming out of these logs. There you go. And I guess I just wanted to mention that as far as timing for harvesting logs to inoculate, the real sweet spot that I've found, or we found over time, is when the sap is just beginning to run in the species you're harvesting. So in this case, sugar maple. And here we are in mid-February. We had warm time last week. The sap started to flow. We generally wait to hear around our neck of the woods folks starting to tap maples and we think, okay, it's time to think about harvesting logs. And now we got this cold snap again where the ground is rock solid frozen. So my old two wheel drive truck can safely drive through the woods. And also just as importantly, our foot traffic and the felling trees do not hurt all the spring ephemerals, perennial herbaceous plants that are all through here, the trilliums, the ramps, the, the specials that come up early spring. So sap is rising in the given species you want to inoculate, and ideally the ground is pretty locked up. Uh, somewhere at that intersection is the perfect time to be harvesting these logs.
We're back home. That took, what, three hours? Yeah. And how many louts? 88. That's a good number. It's a good number. We're, we're happy with our 88. <laughs> and um, they're on the, this is the north side of our garage. And so these logs will rest here for minimum of two weeks, up to four weeks, six weeks or so. And then we'll do the next phase, which will be the inoculation. We'll document every single step. And um, what are your what are your hopes with having the mushrooms? Just lots of cooking and lots of giving them to friends and family. That's your favorite part, is giving them to people. Well, my mom gave me these overalls and boots that helped me do all the work to do it. So I want to hopefully she gets a lot of mushrooms out of the deal. Lots of lots of excess mushrooms to share. Rough calculation will be, from what I understand of it, uh, the fresh weight of the logs you inoculate, one-tenth or ten percent of that weight is the weight of mushrooms you can expect as a yield. Very rough guess. The weight in the truck was really significant, probably about a thousand pounds. Let's hope for a hundred, we'll end up with a hundred pounds of shiitakes over the next in two to six years with this. So we'll keep you in the loop on the next phase and thanks for joining us on our process. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I think